On today's episode, we have a part one of two with Raheem Fazel, the co-founder and CEO of SV Academy. Tune in to hear Raheem's insights into the current SCR trends happening through COVID, as well as learn some of his insights as to how you can take advantage of this opportunity to advance your career. Your success is our success, so let's get started. From the heart of Silicon Valley in beautiful San Francisco, California, welcome to the SDR Live podcast with Marcos and Andy. Awesome. Well, super excited to have Raheem the Dream Fazel on the SDR Life today. Raheem, welcome to the show. Yeah, it is so good to be here with you too. You guys, you guys are the you guys are two of the goats, greatest of all times here at SV Academy. It is it's an honor for me to be here. I believe this is episode one. Is that right? Episode one? Exactly. Yes. We wanted to All right, really, let's do it. Bring the, big, bring the big guns. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I still remember back before I, I, I was interviewing for SVA and then Raheem being one of the toughest interviewers for, oh, yeah. for our last Most part. And, and now, now we're here. Like, look, it all worked out, right? It's, it all worked out. Yeah, it's crazy because like the bar, the bar for SVA Academy is really high because the, like, as you now have learned now being in the field, it's not a joke out there, right? Really like the expectations are, are really high especially right now for an SDR. So I'm glad that we, we held the bar high and you guys, you guys surpassed it like crazy. Awesome. Well, yeah, one of the first questions we wanted to ask, especially um, with the audience that's new is, you know, what are some of your accomplishments? And, you know, I'll, I'll just list them off for now. No, um, please do. <laughs> so obviously CEO of SV Academy just recently had two university partnerships with Florida International and Arizona State. Number two on the Fast Company's 2020 mm. Most Innovative Education Companies. You just had a Series A in 2019, and you're having you know several investors, including Ashton Kutcher. Mm. And then, I mean, the accomplishments just keep going, you know, over and over. I mean, America's top 30 entrepreneurs under 30 by Inc. Magazine. Top 40 under 40, uh, top 25. I mean, come on, Raheem. Like, <laughs> is there anything else that you can do? <laughs> Don't oh, forget man. Battle Rapper, Raheem. Oh, Dream, yeah. Most definitely. Most <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, man. I'm also, don't forget, I think one of my, my proudest accomplishments is, is I'm a new father as well. That's a really big deal for True. me. So I have, a, I have a baby at home, just uh, 14 months. And I will tell you, especially during COVID, it is like, it's like one of the most amazing experiences, but it's also like one of the greatest challenges I've ever had as an entrepreneur trying to balance integrating work and home, like literally physically integrating it all into wow. one space, especially living in, in the city in San Francisco. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been a great challenge, most definitely. So I'm going to have to add that to my LinkedIn profile as well. <laughs> Oh, definitely. most definitely. I mean, father, CEO, <laughs> statesman, uh, you know, teacher, occasional comedian, educator. you know, <laughs> <laughs> you name it, Raheem the Dream is it. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's a lot. And as as you know, like during through COVID, right? We're we're seeing the the SDR industry completely, you know, get turned on its head. Mm. And so uh, we're just really curious and getting your thoughts on you know, where you see the industry going and, and some of the, the trends there? Well, the first thing is that when we started SV Academy, we picked the SDR role uh, with a lot of intention. And that intention was we felt that it's sort of like an equivalent to doing a one-year graduate program, let's say an MBA after school or at some point in your career. Because like, if you think about an MBA, the the benefit of it is that, you know, you get this, you get this great brand, you learn um, like a lot of frameworks around business and how business leaders think and a lot of hopefully real practical case studies and, and things like that crash course in business, right? And at an interdisciplinary level, and then you're also building out your network and that network is gonna help be a trampoline for you as you progress through your career. And in the same way, the role of an SDR provides those three things as well. And in fact, I would say at much, much greater levels and, and the best part is you actually get paid 
to do the job <laughs> instead of having to pay and get a whole bunch of debt, uh, you know, accumulated. I think you, um, first and foremost, you know, starting in as, as an SDR, which is usually like an entry level role for someone, uh, their first role in the tech industry, all of a sudden you find yourself on the inside. And I think about the two of you as I got to know you over the years, very, very different experience we're having with one another and me, my experience of you uh, in just a short period of time going from outsiders to now being firmly insiders and also sort of carrying the flag and, and having a platform and bringing a community together with this podcast, right? So mm -hmm. you are sort of, you know, made men, made people, you are on the inside uh, in a very short period of time. And I think about that is, all right, you've got your credential now. The, the, the second thing is that interdisciplinary uh, crash course in business. You know, when you are an SDR and you actually do the hard work, uh, particularly for you know at least a year, if not two, you're getting a chance to see all sides of how the business operates. I think revenue is probably the most valuable part of the business uh, to 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 learn about because it it's it's a, it's a skill set and experience set that will uh, carry with you all the way through your careers, no matter whether your role has the word sales in it or not, right? And you're also interacting with different departments in the organization. And so you're building empathy, building an understanding, getting a lot of visibility. And then thirdly is the network, right? The two of you have come together, you're bringing people together, you've built your network. It's so much greater and stronger than it was before. And most likely your future opportunities are coming from this network in the same way it's typically been so for business school graduates, except I think you guys are, you've packed in like two or three years into like a short span of like a year plus, right? So mm -hmm. I think first and foremost, I think this actually is a wonderful time to kind of just reflect on and appreciate the importance of the journey you've had and the role you, you have as an SDR or soon to be SDR or uh, kind of re-entry back as an SDR in terms of like what you're learning and where it's going to take you the importance of, where, of, of, of how it will help take you to where you want to go in the future. Um, I think that's, that's one of the biggest things I, I recommend to, to, to everyone I talk to right now to just take a moment and reflect uh, and be grateful um, because, you know, there are a lot of people out there who don't have the benefit of listening to this podcast, don't have the benefit of working in the tech industry who are you know, trying to, trying to get in or um, have not even heard about this career path and are probably uh, unemployed or underemployed in a job that they don't really have a lot of passion for and probably won't take them to places that this role is going to take, uh, take you. So that's just first and foremost is just, you know, being grateful, I think, for, for, for what you have and what you have in the role of an SDR. Probably never a moment in your career or your lives where you will have as much appreciation for the role of an SDR uh, as you as you do right now. Oh my gosh, I was just thinking the same exact thing the other day when you know it, you know how we, we we launched this podcast. We actually did a, a survey of ninety five SDRs, and mm -hmm. we were actually reaching out to those that had actual SDR in their title. But we ended up seeing that you know five to six of them were actually laid off. Right. right. And that, yeah. that kind of puts into perspective how, how fortunate we are. Yeah. Uh, but one thing that I think I picked up there was this this idea of just your it's kind of analogous to like sports, right? It's like you get injured, now's the time to like really rebuild yourself so you can yeah. come back and absolutely crush it. Oh, most definitely. This will end, right? So if the, whether or not this is your first downturn, um, sort of you know, your experience with an economic downturn, which for a lot of SDRs, it, it may be. I've had the benefit of seeing this a couple of times in 2000. I was still really young at that point, but I was working in tech through high school and I remember what it felt like, but really more so in 2008, but when I was getting my last, my last company started. And I know at that time, it, it felt like my whole world was turned upside down. I had no idea what to expect. There was so much fear, uncertainty, and doubt around me and, and um, around my friend circle and people that I spent, spent time with. And then I remember being on the other end of it at, at, at one point and looking back and thinking, I wish I knew what I do now back then because I would have, I would have used that time differently. I would have 
I would have tried to shift away from being so fear driven to really thinking about the future and seeing this time as an opportunity for me to build and really build, really, really build towards that future, which if you look at cycle, uh, cycle times, somewhere between one, two years from now, and people have different opinions on this, but we're within sort of, we're within, you know, 10, 20, 30%, you know, of the range, right? It's not gonna last forever. And this time in a lot of ways is a gift and a blessing. And, and what you do with that gift and what you do with that blessing is entirely up to you. Yeah, I, I love that. You're so right about um, after going through just experiencing like the different stages of grief of just, wow, yeah. what is going oh, yeah. on? And then losing your, potentially losing your job and losing all the plans that you had as well as losing kind of the social distancing. What, what really turned the corner, and I hope many of our audience will, will reflect on this and, and hopefully use this as inspiration, is that to kind of mentally shift your mindset, mm -hmm. your mindset in that this is an opportunity for growth and that this is an opportunity of a lifetime. This, this yeah. hasn't really happened that many times. So now is when you can build each other and then become better, emerge a better person out of this. Yeah, I most definitely. Yeah, and it's definitely. so so refreshing to hear it from from Raheem too, right? I mean, we have one of the best CEOs, you know, out there in the Silicon Valley telling us this. Oh, idea you guys are gonna of... come everywhere I go. This is the next interview me. Any day, all day long, I'll do all the episodes. Well, I think what's great about it is this idea of a growth mindset. Um, and you know, with, with this growth mindset, that's exactly what we learned throughout the academy, right? When, yeah. when you're faced with your, your back against the wall, like, what are you going to do? And mm -hmm. that, that kind of leads us into one of the, the next points, which is obviously you have a lot of, you know, CEO friends and yeah. a lot of buddies out there, you know, are they thinking the same way or are, are more, you know, pessimistic about it? Or are they all pretty much thinking it's going to recover? I think by, by like self-selection, you wouldn't become an entrepreneur and you wouldn't become a CEO if you didn't have, you know, the, the genetics and the biology and the mindset around there will be better days ahead. In a lot of ways, sort of COVID is representative of the very early days of any entrepreneurial venture. You're starting something in complete darkness and there's a ton of uncertainty and you have a lot of people around you who are telling you it's a bad idea and you have to get to truth as quickly as possible, but you likely don't have a lot to work with. And, and you don't know when the, that, that light at the end of the tunnel, if ever, will, yeah. will emerge, right? Which, which may feel a lot like a lot of people's <laughs> experience right now in COVID. <laughs> oh, also when you're starting a company, you're usually stuck at home, right? Cause you don't have an office. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of parallels, right? And so I think, I think entrepreneurs in general, I think people who, who have been around entrepreneurship and I think the SDRs who are listening to, to this podcast I think, again, one of the great benefits that you have is you're beginning to accumulate those hours in an entrepreneurial environment around entrepreneurial people and energy. And I think the more you suck, the more you kind of consume, I was going to say suck up that energy, like really kind of internalize it, right? Uh, you know, the, the more prepared you will feel. Uh, you don't need to be, you know, at the head of a company uh, or in some lofty position or unlofty position, like a lot of us founders are actually, um, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to sort of rewire yourself or, uh, in a way where you can see these times as real opportunities. So the punchline is it feels a lot, I think, for my entrepreneurial friends, this period feels a lot like, feels very familiar in some ways because we've experienced it once or several times in our lives, uh, at least. And the one thing that we know is that you keep your head down, you do the hard work, uh, it's take one day at a time and you move forward. And, and then you, at some point, will pick your head back up and you will notice that we're in a brand new world and things are different and there is more um, abundance than, than you ever dreamt of. Uh, and in a lot of ways, that is, that's, that's also the life of an SDR on a day-to-day -day basis, pre-COVID times or right in kind of quote unquote normal times. 
You are so right. I was just going to say there are so many parallels between kind of the SDR uh, be, and, and then being an entrepreneur role, as well mm-hmm. as just going through COVID, this whole situation where you have to constantly face adversity, rejection. I think there's a stat that says 90% of startups fail within like the first one or, or three oh, years. Oh, yeah, like that. Probably, probably more. And, and that's succeed. a direct parallel kind of yeah. to the so, SDR role where yeah. we can send... 90 per, uh, 90% of our prospects, we either don't even get a response or you just get a no, especially for cold calling. It can be, it can right. be even higher where you're yeah. just getting no's off the bat and you really yeah. have to, to really face adversity. Yeah, most definitely. So I think the first thing that a lot of CEOs did well before uh, sort of the rest of the team and the rest of the organization may even have kind of tuned into it is that, you know, in, in, late February, early March, a lot of us uh, started working on scenario planning and trying to vision into and then model, financially model, like what the future might look like through the end of this year. And then I think as we got into middle March, we started looking more into 2021 because we understood that this might actually take longer. There might be multiple waves of the infection. And I'd say in that period of time, it was all within a couple of week period of time. I'd say most of us um, kind of honed in on, on sort of a set of, of scenarios that we could then start making decisions against. And in, in some cases, these were like upside scenarios, like very upside, very obviously upside. And those are cases, those are, those are cases where you're seeing, for example, you know, infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, security, uh, et cetera, uh, where I think those CEOs looked at their business and saw that actually the way the trends may play out, there will be a lot more demand uh, and it's going to burst soon and we need to prepare for that. That's the exception the moreover the overwhelming majority of of companies are like holy shit i don't know like i have no idea what the hell is going to happen and there was a kind of race towards protecting the downside as fast as possible and that downside i think for a lot of ceos um sort of looked like kind of to the rest of the team may have looked like knee jerk reactions uh, may have looked like um, paralysis. Right. And in some cases that might be true in some cases it might be true. And I feel like I have a lot of empathy as a, as a founder um, with other founders out there, your, your current leadership or, or prior leadership or future leadership uh, because we kind of went through the same wave of, both like at a human level, the emotions, and then you kind of shift into asking questions and getting curious and then trying to answer those questions and seeing that cycle sort of not just take one, not, not, not get finished in a matter of a day or a couple of days or weeks, knowing that this is going to be this sort of ever unfolding experience that will probably take longer to understand, let alone respond to than we think. Hey, Andy, who is sponsoring today's podcast? Great question. Today's podcast is sponsored by SV Academy, an online sales fellowship program that connects job seekers to employers hiring for full-time sales roles. Learn more with the link below. The, the one thing I think that would be helpful to understand, uh, to kind of get into the mind of a CEO, into the mind of a founder, is that, again, none of us are going into this I mean, getting into starting a company with a a sort of pessimistic view of the future, which is what I said earlier, right? Like we all have taken this risk and the opportunity cost to start a company because ultimately we believe in in, in a greater future ahead. And, And we're willing to do like a lot of unnatural decisions, uh, including, as I was saying, having a startup and a baby and all of the other things that are happening um, uh, to go and pursue this dream because you want to see it happen so much, right? 
the, the one thing I think will be helpful for each of us to, each of you listening, each of us to think about is like, how can I support leadership in sort of advancing the business and in being an ally through an experience that feels like really uncomfortable for me as a team member, but has got to feel like 10 times more uncomfortable if I'm in leadership, right? Yeah. And the best way to actually sort of understand that and activate that would be to ask questions, to like listen really well and ask questions. So we, we've probably heard a lot from leadership in the last couple of months, right? We've all been more, for the most part, more active in, in communication and and trying to, I think we're all trying to share what's what's kind of present and what do we know, what do we don't know, what's our thoughts about the future, trying to be more frequent with our communication. So you're hearing a lot, right? And then, and then I think it is sort of asking critical questions from the point of view of leadership to the leadership. Uh, well, first to yourself, probably, probably reflecting on what you're what you're hearing, and then engaging with leadership and asking questions from leadership's point of view around like, what is really going on for you? What are you most un- afraid of? What are you most excited about? And as we shift more into an excitement mode, uh, I think there will be lots of really good conversation and insight that will stem from those, from that inquiry that you could then incorporate into your day-to-day activity. And, and very specifically, I think if you may have a role as an SDR and you may think I have this box, right? I have to play within this box and there's certain goals I need to meet. Well, first and foremost, you need to make sure that you are doing everything you can to, to hit those goals. But there are 24 hours in the day and it is a little bit of a different cycle right now in terms of what the SDR experience looks like. And so how can you use the nights and weekends and the moments in between to really think about other ways that you can provide support to leadership, to your CEO, to your, to your manager. And there are, there are maybe some non-obvious ways. I mean, one big thing for, for sure is, is we are all thinking about how to continue to focus on our customers, our existing customers. We're thinking about retention. So what, what are ways that you could sort of begin to, to look over the other side of the workflow and support from a customer success point of view? Uh, are there creative ways in which you can really push the, the thinking and the innovation and alignment f- for your existing team and its activities more broadly, right? What are, what are the questions that you're not thinking about, right? What are the things that you could be testing and experimenting with? Uh, and then there's like team, man- team and culture support that I think managers, leaders are all struggling with right now because there's just so many balls in the air, so many things that you have to sort of spend your time on. We could all use support from all parts of our organization. I love those, you know, nuggets of insight. That's what I like to call them, nuggets of insight uh, mm. because it's just so powerful. One thing that, I, that caught my attention was this idea of thinking of creative, right? Mm-hmm. New ways to help solve a problem. It's almost mm-hmm. like you're being the entrepreneur for the, the, the company, the organization, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so how, you know, from a, say SDRs are out there, or even, you know, some AEs are out there and they, they have these ideas, right? But they might be in a bigger organization or they might be in a small organization, but they're, mm-hmm. they're not sure how to approach someone at a VP level or a mm-hmm. CEO level. How would you, like, what advice would you give them would, would that to be over email? Would it be over, you know, Zoom chat? Like, mm-hmm. how, how would you go about that? Well, I think the, the, the foundational piece of this is that leadership needs to understand <laughs> deeply that you are doing your job, your existing job, yeah. uh, to the level of expectation that they're counting on, right? That's like table stakes. You can't, can't start any new conversations until that, that is a truth. And there is that trust, right? That, that yeah. okay, I don't have to worry about that person. That person has their stuff together. Uh, they understand what, what I am most critically relying on them for, and they're focused on that on a day-to-day basis. So then once that's happened, then I think you've, you've created a, some solid footing to reach out. So the listening piece will be like, hey, I heard at the all hands meeting that you mentioned that there are these two or three key priorities in marketing 
or in product. And starting with sort of the parts of the organization that like leadership is saying, like this is a priority for us, like as a business, right? And acknowledging that like, making it clear that you are listening and then acknowledging that you've understood that that's important. And you, the basis for your outreach is that you want to be like, you understand that that's important because you heard that it was said and you're looking to, to be as helpful as you possibly can be. And then I think a couple of additional ideas are one, often like leadership right now is so stretched thin. So there, a good question to ask is, are there, are there other people in the org that, are, uh, that you've tasked with trying to get their heads around this issue that I could just plug in with? And, and, and you don't have to worry about it. Just point me in the right direction to the right person. And I'll go do that. And then the other one might be providing um, something to react to. So one thing I've noticed in the last, especially the last two or three weeks, mm -hmm. is that there have been different members of the team who over the weekend, they may have heard something that was said in the Friday wind down meeting. And then over the weekend, they began sort of thinking about it and working on it and just email uh, email us on a Sunday or a Monday morning and say, Hey, over the weekend, I spent a couple hours just pulling together my thoughts on a question that you brought up on Friday. And sometimes it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and in some cases it's actually now folded into a key initiative that we have. And that person is playing like an additional role because they've raised their hand to say that, that they're interested in this. So I think that's, those are a couple of ideas. I think ultimately, if you're doing your job and, you're, and leadership knows it, then you have created the opportunity to be even more helpful. Why this question is important is it's pretty key to just really spell out. And that is that we're going through, in, in normal times, when you're working in an entrepreneurial organization, the leadership is always looking for kind of like the up and comers, like who are... And it's usually, it's usually a small percentage of people. It might be 5% or less, 2% that you know, okay, there are those people in my org, in my team that I can see playing bigger roles in the future, taking on more responsibility. What's happened right now is that because there's been a rupture, uh, there are a lot of open questions out there, starting with strategy as we began at the beginning of this conversation, right? All the way down to, okay, what's the plan and set of activities and the execution around that? Because of, because of that rupture, uh, like there are a lot of open questions and therefore open opportunities that are sitting there on the table or uh, you could help to, to pull together and put on the table, right? But, but essentially there's like, there are opportunities right now that didn't exist before that exist right now because we are in this these uncertain times and we will be in different times where there will be more certainty more convergence because that's like the cycle this is like the time where there are no rules in some cases you can you can you can jump around you could leapfrog you could get your you could get involved with you know different important um you know, like drivers of, of the business or the future business uh, that might have been more limited or inaccessible in the past because we all tried to swim within our lanes. And, mm -hmm. and I think that is a big learning that if you've been through these cycles before, you'll know that, oh, wow, okay, when this happens, this is actually an opportunity. I need to like get my work done. I need to do what's most important in terms of my role and what, my, what, what, what management expects. And then for all of us sort of, you know, like gunners out there, like people are totally always <laughs> yeah. trying to like go up, go above and beyond and, and really push the limits of what's what our contribution. Like this is like a field day right now for you. And if you can, if you can see it, then that's the first step to taking advantage of it and, and, and helping and making that contribution. And you will grow in ways that you wouldn't have, been able to before. Awesome. And so that, that leads us to our next round, which is a quick rapid fire questions. First right, one to Raheem. 
is do you love to win or hate to lose? Oh, wow. So here's, here's one recent example of this, which is I hate to lose. How do I know this? My sister and I are playing words with friends right yep. now. And <laughs> she beat me twice in a row. Oh, and gosh. it gets me like viscerally, like frustrated, uncomfortable um, in both, like both times to the point where like I'm, I have started the game again and I, there's like zero way that I'm like, I, there's like, I will throw this iPad out of the window <laughs> if I lose, if I lose <laughs> this third game, like it's just not happening. I hate, hate to lose. I love it. The competitive spirit. Okay, great. Yeah. The second question that we have is what are some books that have shaped your philosophy and uh, changed your life? Yeah, so I talked about this recently. One of my favorite books is called The 15 Commitments of Conscious Leaders. And one of the co-authors, Diana Chapman, is my coach. And I've had a chance to work with her over the last three or four years now, I think four years. And the first two commitments, I think, are like the most important uh, of the whole 15 and like very, very applicable to anyone who's trying to be an incredible business leader, but also just, just like a human, you know, just being the very best human you possibly can be. First commitment is taking 100% responsibility of what's in your control, right? And you could think about what that means in the context of COVID, for example, since this is a topic that we're all experiencing yep. together right now. So for example, uh, a quick one that comes to mind right now is if you just got laid off from your job, for example, it's very easy to, to look at responsibility in everywhere else beyond yourself, right? And if I were in this situation, taking 100% responsibility would be, well, I decided to move countries and come out here to the Bay Area. I chose to work in tech. I chose to work for this particular company, which is a startup, most likely, uh, where there is a lot of upside, but also downside, which I may be experiencing right now. And then I chose to be in the role of an SDR, which, which is a difficult role for most people. And, and I could keep going on like da 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 The second uh, commitment is around curiosity. And what that means for me is detaching myself from feeling I need to be right about everything. I think when I was younger, I could even just use like a sales call as an example. I felt so connected so so firm that my product my my company was the very very best and that that customer needed it and i would not there was just no room for any other divergent opinion or scenario and for that reason i think i could be very forceful and that worked uh enough that i developed a bad habit around that and it wasn't until later in life i realized that even when I would win, I would lose like later oh, because yeah. I, would, I would create like an unnatural experience and it's almost like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole and then the customer would be unhappy with it down the road and that would be painful. And I think understanding that you're not always right in the context of being an SDR could be maybe your product is actually not the right fit for this prospect. And mm -hmm. just sort of tuning into the possibility of that also being a truth, right? Not, but notwithstanding that you have a preference for your product to support the company. You have a preference for, you know, closing um, the business. You have a preference for being involved in this customer's journey, whatever it might be. Uh, but, but actually by seeing that the opposite, that your customer Maybe this prospect should use your competitor's product, or maybe the prospect doesn't need it at all. Actually opens yourself up to being more authentic, which is what we talked about earlier, in terms of how you ultimately support the prospect to moving forward and, and likely moving forward with you. Yeah. Does that make wow. sense? Oh, 100%. I mean, control what you can control and be curious, right? Um, totally. It seems so easy, but it's hard. <laughs> Uh, it is really hard. It takes a lot of intention and it takes practice. And because it's so good, because it's not easy. Like, 
<laughs> it is a muscle yeah. you need to work on and then it becomes more natural. Even in the very challenging case right now, if anyone's listening who has been laid off and there's the question of like, why did this happen? I was like a top performer on the team. Like, why did this happen? Mm -hmm. Really kind of doing the work to see why this was actually the very best thing to happen for you. Like why actually getting let go? Why, how can that be the very, very best thing for you in your life? What might be possible as a result of you being let go? Could there be like a way better opportunity like down the road, right? Maybe you weren't that committed to being an SDR to begin with, or maybe you are so committed to being an SDR that being let go has like emboldened you. It's reinforced your conviction, which means that when you get that at bat the next time, you're gonna knock it out of the park. Wow, I mean, amazing episode just to hear Raheem's mind and, and how SDRs can strategize and really get ahead and grow your career is just, you know, super fascinating. What do you think, Andy? Man, that was such a great episode. We got to hear some of the things that were top of mind for a CEO as he's currently experiencing the COVID situation so that us as prospectors can really understand how to empathize and how to really add value. The day-to-day -day of CEO is in that value. However, tune in next week to learn how he reviews different prospecting emails and voicemails to see if he'd take a meeting. Thank you for listening to the STR Live podcast. If you like this episode, please share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you tune in next week and have a fantastic week.